Hello, my dear friends. I welcome you all to my daily dose. So I am myself, Dr. Rajesh Kuba. I am a cardiologist, and I am also the mentor for teaching general medicine for exams like NEET PG, AIMS, PGI, and as well as JIPMA. So as a part of today's daily dose, I have a 28-year-old man, and he has been newly diagnosed with asthma. He has never been admitted to the hospital with an asthma exacerbation and experiences symptoms once or twice a week now. And you have discussed the treatment options with him and his peak expiratory flow reading is currently 85% of the normal predicted value expected for his age and height. Which of the following is the most appropriate first treatment in this patient? Short acting beta 2 agonist, long acting beta 2 agonist, low dose steroid inhaler, leukotriene receptor antagonist, and high dose steroid inhaler. So, this particular question is on the management of the bronchial asthma. Now, how to approach this? Let me take up. Like in patients with the bronchial asthma, first of all, if you see the answer to this particular question, the answer is short acting beta 2 agonist why short acting beta 2 agonist why not the other options as the answer let me take up now now in patients with the bronchial asthma you need to give two groups of drugs one is your bronchodilator therapy and second one is your anti-inflammatory drugs okay why because in patients with the bronchial asthma it is basically the inflammation which will induce the bronchoconstriction so you give bronchodilator and as well as the anti-inflammatory drugs for the treatment of bronchial asthma and you take bronchodilators like we have beta 2 agonist anticholinergic drugs and as well as phosphodiesterase inhibitors that is theophyllin anti-inflammatory drugs like what we have is steroids anti-leukotriene anti mast cell inhibitors and as well as anti-IgE which is nothing but your omalizumab now you cannot give all these particular drugs to the patient right so how do we give the drugs to the patient is that first of all we should decide the CVRT of bronchial asthma in the patient. Now, how to decide or how to make out the CVRT of bronchial asthma in a patient? So, how do you assess the CVRT is based on the FEV1 values. So, you will do a pulmonary function test and you will check the FEV1 values. Now, in patients with the bronchial asthma, FEV1 value will be reduced. So, if it is reduced 50 to 80 percent, that is considered to be mild bronchial asthma. And if it is reduced to 30 to 50 percent of the normal, that is considered to be moderate bronchial asthma. And if it is reduced less than 30 percent of the normal, then it is considered to be severe bronchial asthma. Now, if you take in our patient, in our patient, the peak expiratory flow rate, it is nearly around 85 percent. And how much is the normal peak expiratory flow rate? Normal peak expiratory flow rate, it is around 80 to 100 percent. This we can consider it as normal. So in our patient, he is having asthmatic attacks, but peak expiratory flow rate is 85% within the normal limit, right? And he is a case of newly diagnosed asthma. So this is a very important point in this question. Now, so after assessing the CVRT, now how do you start the treatment? Like in the treatment of bronchial asthma, we have what is called stepwise approach. Like what is that? Let me tell you. So you have the treatment for mild intermittent asthma, mild persistent asthma, moderate persistent, severe persistent and very severe persistent. Now how do we classify mild, moderate, severe that is based on your FEV1 values that already I have discussed. Now this particular patient he is having two, one or twice episodes in a week and that too the peak expiratory flow rate is around 85%. So we can consider this particular patient as mild intermittent asthma. So we can consider this particular patient having mild intermittent asthma because he is not having continuously, he is not having persistently. Once or twice in a week he is having. So that is the reason why we call it as mild intermittent. So in mild intermittent, what are the drugs we give? We give short acting beta 2 agonist. Whereas an individual with mild persistent Along with this short acting beta 2 agonist for symptomatic relief, we also give low dose inhaled corticosteroids. Whereas in case of moderate persistent, we also add long acting beta 2 agonist along with the inhaled corticosteroids. Whereas in severe persistent, like what we do is we continue the same group of drugs, but the only thing is we increase the dose of the steroids. So we give inhaled corticosteroids at a higher dose. 
whereas in case of very severe persistent asthma we also add oral corticosteroids long acting beta 2 agonists and as well as inhaled corticosteroids are given at a higher dose but for symptomatic relief for a quick symptomatic relief we can also add short acting beta 2 agonist so this is what is your stepwise treatment for the treatment of the bronchial asthma now you take the treatment of the patients with the bronchial asthma we have some multiple choice questions here now what is the drug of choice for acute ac asthma exacerbation remember it is a short acting beta 2 agonist that is salbutamol nebulization but for recurrent attacks what is the drug of choice the drug of choice is the inhaled steroids that is buticinide fluticasone along with that you can also give long acting beta 2 agonist and for chronic persistent asthma the drug of choice is the omalizumab and for brittle asthma the drug of choice is subcutaneous adrenaline so these are the drug of choices in the treatment of asthma with the respective conditions now what are the drugs we give for prophylaxis we give leukotriene receptor antagonists or leukotriene modifiers that is zolotan and as well as montelukast and mastel stabilizers that is nidopromyl sodium sodium promoglycate and as well as ketotifen so these are the drugs which are used for prophylaxis now going back to our question now so in this question he is a newly diagnosed patient of asthma he is having intermittent attack and he is mild intermittent asthma so what will be the first step in the treatment you need to give short acting beta 2 agonist so this is a very short video on the management of asthma so i hope you might have liked this particular video so please follow us on the daily dose for the daily updates